This is a medium difficulty GMAT practice question. I'll classify this one as a GMAT 650 level question. It's a geometry question. It's a property of a triangle question. Let's spend half a minute in understanding why we are doing this question. This concept of finding out the radius of the in circle, a circle inscribed in a triangle, is not something that's quite often tested in the GMAT. Then what's the point of doing this? The primary idea is that I want to walk you through a framework to solve certain kinds of questions when it comes to the triangle properties, right? So we'll look at that framework. I'm actually going to be solving this question using two methods. The first method will help us understand this framework. And this question lends itself beautifully to understand that framework. The second method, I'll walk you through that method too, which is giving you a formula to solve this. Once you know the formula, it's actually a three letter formula, to be honest. Once you know that formula, you'll be able to solve this question in under 20 seconds. So if you get a question of this kind, it's a 650 level question, probably likely to be the 20th or the 22nd question or the 31 questions that you have. So in that case, you'll be able to crack that kind of a question in under 20 seconds. So method one, to understand the framework. Method two is a formula based one. So if you get for some reason this question in the examination, apply the second method, but know the first method, which is going to be useful to solve a variety of other questions. Let's get started. What is the radius of the circle inscribed in the triangle whose sides measure 5, 12, and 13 units? 5, 12, 13, does it ring a bell? Yes, it's a Pythagorean triplet. So the triangle that we are talking about is a right triangle. Know at least the first few popular Pythagorean triplets, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 15, 8, 17, 24, 7, 25, right? Google and check out the top Pythagorean triplets which are tested. Look at those values for which the hypotenuse is under 100 because anything more than 100, GMAT is unlikely to be testing it. So at least keep these in mind, note them down on a piece of paper and look at it for about a week. In seven, eight days, you'll be familiar with these numbers. So next time you look at a Pythagorean triplet, you know that it is one, you'll spot it and you know we are going to be working with a right triangle. The right triangles, actually many formulae become so much easier once you realize it's a right triangle. We now know it's a right triangle. Let's get started. Method one. The framework works this way. We're going to be computing the area of this right triangle. We're going to be computing the area of this right triangle using two different formulae. The framework that I was mentioning is that for a lot of questions, you'll compute the area of the triangle using two different methods, either two different formulae or two different orientation of the triangle. And then you'll equate the two because you're talking about the same triangle. And then you'll find out what is to be found out. So let's start with the first formula, area using the first method. What is the formula that comes to our mind whenever we talk about area of a triangle? The formula that comes to our mind when someone asks you what's the area of the triangle is half times base times height. So let's use that formula to compute the area. Area is equal to half times base times height. It's a right triangle. Let's draw the right triangle. Hypotenuse is a 13. The other two sides, the sides which make the perpendicular sides are basically 5 and a 12. So area is going to be base into height. The beauty about a right triangle is the perpendicular sides basically become the base and height. So this is equal to half times 5 times 12. This will work out to 30 square units. So computed the area of this triangle using method 1. Now method 2, you need to know a formula. That formula will essentially be a formula that contains what we are trying to find out. We are trying to find out the radius of the inscribed circle. So you're going to pick that formula for area of this triangle, which uses that component. Area of a triangle can also be found out using this formula, R times S. R is the radius of the inscribed circle, which is what we need to find out. What is S? If you recall the formula to find out, another formula to find out the area of the triangle, the Heron's formula, right? Which is square root of S times, S minus A times, S minus B times, S minus C. The S in it is the same as the S here, which is the semi-perimeter of the triangle. Semi-perimeter of the triangle is equal to the perimeter upon 2, perimeter divided by 2. 5 plus 12 plus 13 is the perimeter divided by 2 should give us a semi-perimeter. 17 plus 13, 30 upon 2, 15 is the semi-perimeter. So Compute the semi-perimeter, area is equal to R times S. So this is equal to R times 15. So as mentioned, the framework essentially is we're talking about the same triangle. We computed the area using one formula. We computed the area using the second formula. Equate the two because it's the one and the same triangle we are talking about. One of these methods has given us a value. The second one has left us with the unknown that we are trying to compute. So next step should give us the answer. 
30, the area computed using method 1 is equal to r times 15, the in radius r is equal to 30 upon 15 which is equal to 2 units, right. Quickly summarize this method, the concept alone in a printed form. The method that we are using is essentially equate the areas using two methods. The first method applies this formula half times base times at the base height formula. So, you will get a value which ended up being 30 square units. The second method we are using another formula which is r times s where s is a semi perimeter, perimeter upon 2. This leaves us with the unknown r which is what we are trying to find out. Step 3 basically equate the areas computed in steps 1 and 2, choice a is the answer. As I said mentioned it is not just two different formulae, sometimes you might compute the area if the triangle is drawn in two different ways for example a 5, 12, 13 you can find out the area taking this as a base and height. You might want to find out the area keeping the 13 as a base and compute the altitude for the hypotenuse, the question could be asking you that. So, net net what you are doing is you are equating the areas, that is a framework that you need to keep in mind. Quite a few questions in triangles can be solved that way. So, I am emphasizing it, repeating it so that you keep this idea in mind. The second method as I had mentioned is going to give you a formula. The formula is as I had mentioned a three letter formula in radius r is equal to s minus h, r s h. If you know this, it is done. What is s? s is the semi perimeter. What is h? h is the hypotenuse. So, therefore, this formula works only for right triangles. We do not have hypotenuse for any other triangle. So, it is a very specific formula. So, if you quickly figure out that what we are talking about is a right triangle. Semi perimeter we computed in the last slide to be equal to 15, hypotenuse is equal to 13, in radius is equal to 2. How long do you think it would have taken us? It would have taken us all of 10 seconds to get to the answer. So, if you know this formula, I would suggest re recall, remember this formula. If a question of this kind appeared, it should take you less than 20 seconds. Let us quickly recap the alternative approach. The alternative approach is essentially remembering the formula. The formula is basically this, the radius of the inscribed circle is equal to s minus h and this formula remember works only for a right triangle. So, if you spot a right triangle, apply this formula r equals s minus h, r is equal to the in radius, s is a semi perimeter and h is a hypotenuse. What did you think about this question? Leave your feedback in the comment section. If you have any doubts about the concept covered in this question or if you have any more questions which are not copyrighted but you would like to get your doubts clarified, post in the comment section. If you find the question interesting, we will shoot a video and upload it. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation and if you have still not tried Visa course online GMAT course, it is high time you did that. Visit this URL wzko, I will write it for your reference wzko.in slash core. This is the most comprehensive online course for the GMAT quant section. Get started today as a trial user and get cracking the GMAT quant section. Best wishes.